Hello and uh, good day. My name is uh, Richard Hurd. I'm the owner of Auto Dealer Marketing Solutions. I've been repping uh, Frazier Software for the last couple of years up here in the New England area. I'm also the owner of the uh, electronic used car record book, uh, which uh, is the only electronic record book you can buy in Massachusetts, approved by the Registry of, the Mo of Motor Vehicles in the State Police. Uh, this uh, video series th uh, that I'm making up is going to be for sale. We're going to sell a video, uh, video series to the customers uh, for the reason of training people, what's happening. I notice a lot of times we install a system, then I get a call back, they want me to go in and re retrain people and uh, it gets pretty expensive. So uh, if you watch this cash or sale video, you're going to find out it's more entailed than any video you've ever seen. And that's what we're going to do with the whole Frazier system. Frazier does have a set of video series, which are shot and sweet, but they don't get down to the real nit nitty gritty the way we're going to do with this type of video. So that being said, let's get the show on the road and start with the cash sale video so all right i'm coming into frazier so i have to log in i've got a password set up on my frazier system uh, just so you know if you want to set up your password system it's it's on the miscellaneous password system you'd have to type in your password continue and I look at mine it shows all the rights I have to do in vehicles all the rights I have in reports all the rights I have in electronic payments and all the rights in miscellaneous so what this does it allows you to create uh, passwords for different people and give them different uh, options that they can do and cannot do so that's what that's all about I'm gonna briefly go into the uh, vehicle file over here. These four tabs are the most used tabs in Frazier. So if I click on video file, here's where I can add vehicles. I'm going to look at one that's previously added. Uh, the Maxima will double click it. It says I already have a, a um, an offer on this car, but it's not sold yet. So it's just letting me know that there is somebody else looking at the car. I can also go into display cost. We hide that purposely in case that's opened up in front of a uh, customer. We will get into uh, how to use this particular part of the screen at a later date in another video, but I just wanted to show you here's where we put original costs. We also put a, uh, a lot fee, which is also known as a pack in the industry, and added cost. On this car, we've got three added costs at this moment, so uh, we'll, we'll get back to this stuff at the date so I'm going to say OK to this and close this screen and now I'm going to go into enter a sale okay so when we come into enter sale over here in the right upper corner we have cash sale outside finance buy here pay here and wholesale uh, we set this up to open up whatever way we want we go into miscellaneous and system options which will be another video how to set up system options so uh, you tell Frazier exactly how you want to handle different types of situations. So, If I were to run a buy here, pay here through here, I would click on buy here, pay here. If I wanted to sell the car wholesale, I'd click on wholesale. This particular deal we want to do is a cash sale. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is the word vehicle here in the center is pick the car you want to sell. So I'm going to click on vehicle and I'm going to pick the maximum by double clicking it. It again tells me that the maximum already has a deposit on it. Okay, so the first thing I want to look at is the sale date, which is today, 1-12-14, the day I'm making this video. This is the retail price, the asking price of the car. You can uh, work a deal with the customer, so I'm going to change this to 5,500. Okay, it is taxable, so as soon as I click, it should uh, fix the tax again. So. 5,500 and click taxable. The rate I have is 6.25% for this state. So if I had to change it to another state, I can change the rate here. I used to think I could put other states in these four boxes. I cannot. 
this is for New York. New York has four different tax rates. So I can, uh, if I unclick this taxable, I can't get in this box to change it. So if you want to get in, you got to do that. Uh, this particular one is a cash sale, and it's it's got all the prices in the system automatically shooting in for me to be able to go to the registry uh, for them. So the seventy-five dollars, the fifty dollars for the place and transfer. We'll get into that in a few minutes. If there's a trade in on the deal, we click on enter trade. We can take up to two trades. And what you want to do here is you're going to automatic. You're going to put in the actual cash value of the car. You're going to take it in trade. And above, up above is going to be what you're going to offer the customer for the trade. It might be a little less than the actual cash value or a little more than the uh, cash value. If it was a previously sold vehicle in your system, you could click this box and a lot of the information would come up. Uh, it does have the VIN decoder, so if you plug in a VIN decoder, it's going to populate a lot of these boxes, year, make, model, so on and so forth. Anything you don't know, you can get from your customer while you're working the deal. Um, you can get the mileage, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, it automatically uh, gives you the next stock number. And if you do not want this car to come into your inventory for any reason, you would uncheck this box. But you still need to put the monies in and all that stuff because we are an accounting system also. So you would check this box if you didn't want it to go into your inventory and what you do sell them the other car. It might be the car is going to go to the junkyard after, or you're going to give the car away to a friend, or whatever you're going to do. Up here is a payoff. If I check this box, I get the account number of the car taken in trade, and I can find out what the payoff and how long the payoff is good for. Uh, check here if the payoff is to me. That means uh, I was doing buy here, pay here, and we can uh, work the deal from there. From there on. All right, down here in the lower right corner is the Carfax. If uh, you have your Carfax set up in Frazier, you can pull your Carfax right from Frazier. The same thing with AutoCheck and this uh, NMVTIS. This is more for people that take cars and, and strip all the parts off them. You're supposed to report that car is, is never to be sold again as, as a completed car. Or So that's more, again, more for, for junk. Cars. So that's what the trade in is all about. I'm going to click out of here for now. We're not going to do a trade in on this car, so there's no net trade value here. This government fee, if you check in, this, check in the box, it's set up for $75. If you're not running to the registry, we can remove all these figures just by clicking in here and making them zero. Uh, I don't use transfer here, I use it down here in the new plates and transfer because it spells it out a little different and breaks the money up a little better for the customer to understand it. Uh, the 185 is a dealer service fee, which is like a documentation fee. Uh, if I'm going to sell on a service contract on this car for 1800 I put 1800 here. As soon as I click tab, it opens up and says who, who you're buying that warranty from. It's ABC warranty. Uh, I'm going to sell gap insurance for $399. And again, as soon as I click a box, I'm going to sell the gap through the gap insurance company. BSI fee, that's a fee that banks charge customers. Uh, it's insurance uh, to, uh, for them to make sure the, the uh, loan that they give out is, is going to go all the way through. Um, on a cash sale, there's never a BSI fee. And uh, as a rule, even if it was a finance sale and we're not financing it here, we're not doing the paperwork here, we don't have to worry about BSI fee. The next one is plates, uh, new plates and transfer. Uh, new plates in this state are $50, transfer is $25. This is a transfer, so I change it to $25 and click somewhere and everything updates again. So the total deal at the moment is 83.2775, which Frazier puts down here as uh, your down payment. Uh, that sometimes that's true, the customer comes in with all the money and we do do it that way, but uh, this uh, a lot of times uh, that varies. Sometimes a customer is going to give you uh, I'm going to make this easy $327.25 Seven five, and I click in here, and I say yes. He gave me a check. It's check number two two five four. And 
yes, he gave me the deposit today on the 12th, and how long is the deposit good for? I'm going to click it here. He gave it to me on the 12th. I'm going to give him to the 16th. Or the, well, let's give him to the 17th to come back with the rest of the money and save the deposit. Now, it shows an $8,000 down payment. We can't leave that there because we're not collecting that $8,000 now. So we're going to delete that. And we're going to go down here to pick up note. And we're going to click in this little box to the right. And sure enough, there's the $8,000 due. And we're going to change it to weekly. And then we're going to click into the calendar. And we're going to pick the same date, the 17th that we picked before, and say OK. So uh, total cash price is $83,2775. And down here is $83,2775. The next thing we want to do is, if this customer has a lien holder, even though it's a cash sale, he may be borrowing money from his, a bank, and we have to put, or whoever, and we have to put the, the, the lien holder on this particular vehicle so it, it prints on their, um, uh, their applications uh, for, the, uh, for the state to make sure that uh, there is a lien holder registered on the vehicle. So I'm going to click into lien holder and check add lien holder. I have a lien holder in the file. Now it says that the lien holder owes me zero at this time, which is going to be true because the customer is coming in on a cash sale with all the money. So now I'm going to go back to pricing. Now what happened on pricing is a few things have changed. Notice down payment one has minus $424. What has happened here is some of these lien holders have fees already in their system, like this, uh, this lien holder had zero for uh, gap insurance, so it, it changed the file from, from the 399 to zero, so I got to put it back in. So you want to check this and make sure, as soon as I put it back in, this box should update. It now minus 25. At 25, again, the lien holder in the, in the box had uh, zero in the field, so it's changed it back to zero, so we're going to make it $25. And then as soon as I click that 25 should go to zero. So now my prices again are right on the money. So you, you definitely uh, want to <laughs> check these figures and make sure everything is, is, is correct. Okay. This NADA button down here, this just came on Frasier recently. Uh, they've added in, and if I click on it, it's what it is, is... Uh, Frazier would collect a $39 monthly fee from you, and what this is going to do, I know a lot of you people have the NAAD, NA, NA, NADA book, but this, uh, this is a computer program, and what you can do is if you've got the VIN numbers of the cars you're going to be looking at at the auction, you could educate yourself a little more by putting the VINs in and running these reports. And these reports tell you what the car is worth, uh, the value of the car, what it sold for at auction, uh, the mileage advertised on the car. There's a lot more information that comes through uh, on, the, on these NADA book, uh, this type of stuff. So it's an education for you, whether it's worth $39. I think it is, because if it saves you making a mistake on one car, it's, it's well worth the money. That's what that is. You don't have to get it, uh, but I just want to explain it. You could also, if you sold service contracts and you needed a service contract provider, Frazier has some. If you don't have your own, you can click in here, and you can call up these uh, different, uh, this is Preferred Warranties website. You click here, you go to their website, you can call them, um, maybe set up a, a warranty service through them. If you want, you don't have to do that, but I just want to explain what is there. So next, I'm going to go over to customer, and it's set up for business right now. So I put the business in and all the information, but this is going to be an individual. And this is going to be Nancy. E is her middle initial. Now, we don't have a box for middle initial, but uh, if she's trading in a car and it has her middle initial on, on the paperwork, you want to make sure you put it the same. And her last name is Higgins. Okay. Nancy lives at 125 
Newberry Road. And now if I put a zip in, it should find me the city, the state, and the county, which it did. Her home phone number is 617-555-5555. Notice I didn't put any dashes. It'll put it in for you. Her work number is 781-444-4444. And her cell phone number is 617-524-9876. Okay, now, email addresses. You want to get everybody's email addresses. Let's see, e345 at ya. Okay, with Frasier, we can export uh, the data into a CSV file, which means you can shoot that into a... Um, Excel spreadsheet, and you can do mailings right out of the Excel spreadsheet about your different inventories. I used to do this when I sold cars, and uh, the more names you get, and uh, the more names you get, the more chance you get to sell more cars. I used to sell two to three cars uh, a month just using this method. Uh, Nancy's date of birth is 060354. She is a female, so I put female. Social security numbers. Uh, you want to be careful with social security numbers. You can get in a lot of trouble if they are sitting up on a screen and the government agencies come in, you can get some heavy fines. So usually if there's any reason to have a social security number, a lot of times it's they're applying for a loan. And most times those loans are written out by on hand, the application. So we have them put their socials there. And we make sure we put it under lock and key then to, uh, to make them secure. So license number, that's the license number. Spouse's name is Harold. Happened to meet Harold at the time. Opting out of non-public disclosure. Up here, this is the vehicle. It came in with 129. It's going out with 129.250. We have driven it a few times ourselves to make sure everything is right. Plus, the uh, customers have done a few test drives on it. Select the salesperson on this deal. We click in here. We add a salesperson. The salesperson is going to be uh, uh, Paul Burrell. Okay. And we save and exit. So now Paul's the salesman. Source code I'm not going to do right now. I'm going to show you what happens there uh, in a few minutes. Retrieve the customer from our database. If we were already a customer, we would have shot all this information in. Credit app. This is a four-page credit app. A lot of people don't use this. They usually write out credit apps by hand. Resident address. This is if the resident address is different than the address here. And for some reason, they want everything to go to the resident resident address. Insurance. Uh, on cash sales, you usually don't need uh, to know about their insurance company, but if you're going to be running to the registry, you may want to grab this information. So it might be Hanover Insurance, that's far as company, get their agent's name, get the phone number. Under policy number, I usually put the fax number. And down here in the comments might be the contact I'm going to need at the insurance company. I do try to get this information from my customer, especially if I'm running to the registry for them, and tell, I tell them to call their insurance company and tell them we're going to be calling uh, to get uh, a stamp uh, that we need to be able to register the car. Uh, so that's what that's all about. That is helpful information to have in a database. So cancel it out. We wouldn't do that. All right. So at the moment, we have the pricing. We have the customer information. We have the lien holder all set up here. The next thing we want to do is I'm going to hook over here to deal a cost. Now, we sold them a warranty, and it was 24 months and 24,000 miles, whichever comes first. So I have this in the database, so I can either let the customer know at any time what, what the warranty is, plus uh, some of the warranty companies look here, and we print those figures right out of the, the 
right out of Frazier on their warranty as far as the months and miles. So we put it in there. The other thing you want to do here, and you can't do it in front of the customer, but after the customer leaves, you're going to go in and you're going to say, all right, the service contract cost me $859. And the gap insurance cost me $149. And then the salesman, who is Paul Burrill, I click in here. He set up for 20%, so I can say update. 20% is $421.50. I could also have made it a flat, made the commission zero, and put a flat commission in there if I want. You could put as many, you can do splits with salespeople. You can put as many people on each car as you want. So we'll leave it at that. I can print a commission sheet for Paul so he knows exactly what he's got going on this car. This uh, recap sheet, sometimes we use that too when we're, we're in battle with a customer and we want to decide whether we want to sell, uh, we want to sell the uh, customer this car. He's beaten us up pretty good. We've been in negotiations for quite a while. So we want to click in here and we want to find out if we can afford to sell the customer this car at this price. This particular car, I do know that uh, we definitely want to sell it at this price because we purchased this car cheap. But uh, this is taking a few seconds for it to come up. It should come up very shortly. I apologize for the delay. Okay. So here's the deal. We bought the car at $2,500. We put our lot fee on, which is a $300 fee, which really never gets paid. But that lot fee is supposed to cover you as a dealer, uh, part of your electricity, lights, telephone bills, all that stuff. Plus, uh, it's supposed to cover any warranty work that you do on the car after it's sold. So that's what that is. The added cost, that's the uh, repairs that we've done. So we're into this car for $3,392.50. We sold it for $5,500, which means we have a profit of $2,107 at the moment. If I look down, We've also done some pretty good things here. The service contract, we made another $941. The gap insurance, we made another $250. So we made an additional $1,191. The dealer service fee, which is a dock fee, is $185. Put that into the deal. So this one is a great, a great deal. We made $3,483.50 minus $421 for the salesman. So we've got basically a $3,000 profit. Uh, we'd like to do that on all our vehicles, but as we all know in, in the real life, that don't happen very often. Uh, they tell me the average price is about $1,400 average you're supposed to make. So this one is a big profit, but you're going to have other cars you don't make any profit on. So at the end of, at the, end of the month, you're supposed to average $1,400 a car, basically. So I can print this and put it into the deal once I'm done. So I know exactly uh, what's happened, and uh, we can look at these uh, reports and check them out. So I'm going to close out of here right now. So that's basically what this is all about. And remember I said before that uh, uh, I'm going to save this customer as a prospect right now. I do teach people to save things as prospects in the beginning because you make mistakes. And we can print out all the paperwork from the prospect file. And it, you know, it doesn't have to be in the completed file. And if we've made any mistakes, we can just go in and fix them real quick. But I will show you a couple of different ways. So I'm going to hit Save as Prospect. When I do, it says you must enter the source. This is what I was talking about earlier. I'm forcing you to tell us where the customer found out about us. This customer was Auto Trader. We can run reports uh, to find out... Uh, where our customers are coming from and spend our money more wisely as far as that's concerned. I found that to be a great, excuse me, a great feature. All right, so now if I do hit save as prospect, it should save it. I can print him a receipt for his deposit. I'm not going to do that because there's nothing I can show you at the moment. But it would be a unique, a unique receipt with a unique number on it telling him about the deposit and what car he bought and when the balance is due. So it, it, when I've done that, it shoots us right into 
the, re, the uh, forms printing, I would highlight the motor vehicle purchase contract if he's going to go to his bank and print it. I would also highlight the pickup note addendum, which is uh, telling us how much he exactly, how much he owes us, and I'd print that. I have him sign both of those, make copies, give him the copies, and uh, put those in the envelope and send him packing, and hopefully uh, everything will go smooth. He is highlighted here as, as the customer to print for. If he wasn't highlighted here, I'd click on customer, and he's not in the customer file, as we're going to say. He, where is he? He's in the prospect file, which is down here. So from the prospect file, uh, we're going to pick the customer, or I should say he, it's a, sh it's a she, it's Nancy. So Nancy is back up here, and I can print more stuff if I want. But once those two forms are printed, I'm all set. Nancy can go on her way. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to find out from Nancy or I check when she's coming back. So what I would do is go into enter sales here, retrieve prospect. Here's Nancy's deal right here. And she tells me she's going to be back. I called her the other day. Everything's all set. She's coming back on the 16th. So what I want to do is change the date here. Because most states, if they're transferring, they have up to five to seven days to do a transfer. And you want to make sure that her purchase and sales is dated the day she takes the car out. Because if she does get stopped uh, by, uh, by law enforcement, you want to show, be able to show that you've just purchased this car and that you're still in compliance. Uh, you haven't registered yet. But... Uh, they look at the date up there of, of the PNS. So, so that's that's cool. That's all you know. That's all set. The other thing I could do here now too, by the way, is I could show you. There's another way to do this. All this stuff is I could complete the sale. But before I do that, say you didn't want to do it as a complete sale, you can leave them in the prospect file again. If there's any errors, it's a lot easier to do. And the customer comes in with the $8,000, so all I have to do then is click in here, make that zero up top, backspace it out, say OK, and look what it did for the $8,000 here. So I would then click in here and put in that I just got a check and so on, and see $8,000. And now the car is completely paid for in here. So I'm going to move that back into pickup note. I want to leave it the way I had it before. thousand dollars weekly due on the 16th I believe or the 17th yeah okay so now it's it's back to where I had it uh, again if the customer didn't want us to run to the registry also I could uncheck this taxable this uh, 343 75 is still going to print on their title app even though it's unchecked but it's not going to print on their purchase and sales I could also take out the the um, title fee and make that zero and I could also take off the $25 by doing all this I'm, I'm changing all the figures of course now I'm $443 minus so the car is $400 I'd have to deduct $443 from the pickup note and uh, that would straighten that out but, uh, we're going to put it back in I'm just showing you what we could do we are going to collect the taxes we are going to pay $75 fee, so we're going to collect that. We're going to do that by running to the registry farm. We are going to put the $25 back here. And as I'm doing all this, you can notice the minus figures are going now. It's now the deal is right, and it is going to the mass DOT, that money, the $25. So the, the deal is correct now. We've got the pricing. We've got the customer information all set up here. We've got the lien holder all set up, and we've checked on the all this other pricing. Uh, notice here, now that I've saved this, if you ever wanted to change, like VSI to be, say you sold him uh, uh, an electric car starter or something, you could click in here and change VSI to be electric car starter. So, that's, so it would print as electric car starter on his bill. Uh, the other thing you could do is if you were using all the figures, a lot of times I could, uh, I still need, uh, 
I still need some uh, new plates, 25. I, what I really could do is I can come in here to and add the new plates up here as 25 or $50. That would leave this new plate. I could change the verbiage on that to be, you know, some sort of equipment and put a price in there. So it's another, another kind of workaround. Again, uh, don't let this thing fool you. It's hard to remember, but uh, when you need to get this change other feed descriptions, you can't get to that when you're first doing the deal until you save the deal. Once you save the deal and come back in, then you can hit change other feed descriptions. So it's kind of, I, I personally get a little mixed up on that myself when I try to get it, uh, get it right. So. So that being said, I think we've got everything saved here. The other thing I'm going to show you right now before we uh, finish off on this video is if you completed the sale, even though there's money owed, this is what happens. I'm going to complete the sale. It says, please enter how the deposit was received. And it was, it was a check. And it was check number 2548. Okay, save deposit. Now I can complete the sale. It says that because I'm completing the sale, I can take Mr. Grossman off. So I highlight, refund the highlighted deposit. Yes, for Grossman, because he's not buying that car anymore. And complete sale and leave the deposit, the other deposits alone. So sale has been completed successfully. Right. Now it brings us into here. The other thing I did not discuss is how to print all the paperwork. Uh, as far as uh, when we first sent them out, we sent them out with the just the pre P and S and, and, and the pickup note. But once we know a deal is done and we get the right date on it, see this print all white paper forms down here. You're able to set up in your form system all the forms that print on plain paper in your state. We can we can hit one button and all those forms will print out one right after the other, so you don't have to keep picking forms. It's a great time saver. As a matter of fact, I it was sitting with a customer the other day. They had just finished a deal with, with their customer, and the customer said, look, I don't have time to sit around and wait for the paperwork. I'll come back and sign that paperwork later. And the girl said, listen, I can have you out of here in less than 10 minutes. And the customer kind of chuckled. He said, I've never seen paperwork done in less than 10 minutes. She says, watch. She said, print all white paper. As they're coming out, he had her sign, every, had them sign everything. Once everything was done, she took them all, put them back into her printer and said, make copies of everything. The bottom line is the customer was out of there in six minutes and his jaw dropped and he wouldn't have been happier. So it's pretty cool the way it works. It's, you know. But anyway, there's a couple of other things we should talk about, uh, like bank contracts, uh, Federal credit union contracts, credit acceptance contracts. I have a lot of contracts in my system, but uh, only to show different things. There's book of registry. There's all kinds of things. There's warranty contracts. Uh, Frazier prints two different ways. If it has a P on it or a Y, they're usually plain paper contracts. Anything blank down here is a multiple pot contract. All our multiple pot contracts have to print on an Oki data printer. Uh, if, if you need that type of printer, please call us. We'll let you know where to find them real inexpensive, uh, brand new ones, as a matter of fact. We get them from Amazon. I believe they're $299 people have been paying, which is a pretty good price, the best price around that I know of. But uh, you do need Oki data printers to print the multiple pot forms. And those, those only print one at a time. So you have to pick each one you want to print and just drop it in. They all print from the same spot so and all line up perfectly. So uh, if they don't, we can always contact Frazier and they'll fix that for you. The other thing to remember is Frazier never charges you for anything. Uh, once, you're, once you're a member of Frazier, you're locked into the price for life, which is going to be a price increase either. So. So that being said, I'm going to close this. Now, if I go to enter sales and I had to change that uh, person, they're no longer in here. Where are they? They're in the completed file. So if I have to make changes to that deal, I got to go to customer activity. There's Nancy. 
So when, when I click on Nancy, this um, if I was doing the deal just to close it out here, I would come in and say, Nancy just gave me $8,000. And go over here, and it was a cashier's check. And it was check number 22354. And add the transaction. Okay. Print a receipt for that 8000 And now Nancy owes us nothing. So we're up to date. So Nancy goes along. She goes to the registry. Something's wrong with one of the forms. She calls us back. we got to reprint the forms. We go into customer activity. And we look to all customers. And oh, there's Nancy right there. We open up Nancy and we go to customer processing and we go to cancel a sale and we put the customer back in the prospect file. And yes, and what it does it takes all the money out of the deal, backs it out, <coughs> excuse me, and it's been successfully changed, put back in the file. It also had taken the car out of here. Now the car is back in stock too. So. If I go to enter sale now, retrieve prospect, I can find Nancy here again. There she is. And no, I don't want to change the mileage, but I can fix anything. I might have spelled her name wrong or whatever. Whatever's wrong, I can fix it. Save as prospect again and say OK. And now it brings me in and I can reprint any forms that I need to print and get her packing on her way and then complete the sale again after she's gone. That's about it. That's as, uh, as much as I can come up with on a cash sale. Hopefully this has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, uh, if you have a pen, you might want to grab that. But uh, if you do need help, uh, Frazier, I don't, still don't have all the answers to all this stuff. Uh, but uh, Frazier, as you know, is the best customer service I've ever been dealt with in my entire life. So if you need any help, you could just go to help here and contact Frazier and, and they, they'd be sure they'd be sure enough to uh, get back to you. They also now have this chat chat uh, ability now. I personally don't like that, but uh, you know, some people love it. So we're all different. We all have different ways of doing things. You can send them an email from here if they're closed. Sometimes like on Saturdays, they, they don't answer the phone or after 5 p.m. Eastern time, they don't, but they'll answer the answer emails for a couple of hours. Uh, you could always call me if you need help. Uh, I'm going to give you my phone number, which is area code 781-910-0869. It's Dick Hurd. Uh, my email is dick period herd h u r d at comcast.net. If you're interested in purchasing this video series from us, we'd be happy to uh, um, comply with you and get you all set up. Uh, it should be available very soon, very soon, and I'm sure uh, the video series will help you tremendously. So thank you for your time, and uh, you have a great day.